Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company taking a look at some of the guns that are in their upcoming February of 2017 regional auction. And we've talked about Walch revolvers before, a couple times actually. We've looked at both uh, the small caliber and the navy caliber Walch guns, and they're cool, they're interesting, and when I found this one, well that's just too neat for me to turn out, turn down. So. Uh, a little bit of a quick recap for you guys, if you haven't seen the previous Walch videos I would recommend checking those out, uh, you'll find links to them in the description text. However, the basic idea is the Walch is a superposed chamber revolver, where you have a cylinder with five chambers in it, but you would actually load powder, ball, and then another charge of powder and a second ball. And each chamber has two percussion caps associated with it, one fires straight into the back of the chamber and one fires up along a little fire tube to the middle of the chamber. So you have two hammers, one sheath trigger, and as you pull the trigger the hammers sequentially fall. So the upshot of this is you have a five shot size revolver that actually has ten shots in it. Now the downside of course is that because this you're, you're cutting the chambers in half, the gun's kind of underpowered, it's a small caliber gun in the first place, these are 31 caliber pistols, but it was a very interesting idea. This is Civil War time period, a few of these did actually see use in the Civil War, but what we've got here today that's interesting and special to me is this cut down pepper box sort of Derringer style of Walch revolver. Let's take a closer look at this guy. Disassembly of the original Walch was a wedge pin and a screw right here, so you could take the barrel off for cleaning or whatever needed to be done. What someone did with this one is pretty simple, they took the barrel off, they cut off that little screw um, extension, so no longer, no longer need that, take that off, and then they converted the cylinder axis pin into a screw. So it's held in place, where normally the cylinder is held in place by the barrel assembly, now it's held in place by this screw. Um, this one's a little bit worse for the wear, this has certainly been there and done that, but you have your dual hammers. In fact when I started looking at this one up close I realized the right hand hammer here is actually someone's handmade replacement. Um, you'll notice the checkering on the end is far cruder, and just the general shaping of the hammer was clearly done with some hand tools instead of uh, being a factory made piece. I think that even makes this more interesting, that some home gunsmith chopped this thing down and they, I don't know, they broke a hammer or they took it apart and lost the hammer, who knows exactly why, but they had to then go and also make themselves a replacement hammer for it. So at any rate, uh, sheath trigger down here and it fires sequentially, first the right hammer and then the left. Um, the indexing on this leaves uh, a lot to be desired, but I don't think you'd actually be carrying this in your pocket anymore these days. As with many home gunsmith uh, creative alterations, you might say, even done today, this one seems pretty cool at first glance, but is really of kind of dubious value, uh, practically speaking. You know, these these cartridges, these cylinders were underpowered to begin with and by getting rid of the entire barrel assembly you have even further reduced the muzzle velocity. I imagine this is going to be a pretty impotent uh, thing to, to actually shoot. On the other hand, if you're presumably going to stuff this in a pocket and use it at pretty darn close range, and it would probably get the job done there. Uh, you certainly have ten rounds to do it with, so someone thought that this was just the ultimate 1860s, 1870s, 1880s uh, tactical high capacity pocket pistol. So this sort of shortening of an existing factory pistol is certainly nothing unique to the Walch. Um, I think this has been done pretty much as long as pistols have been manufactured in the first place. Um, although this in particular does bring to mind some of the other period things like the, the Mormon Avenging Angel pistols, the, the cut down Colt percussion guns. That's that's something we'll probably do a video on at some point coming up as well. I think this is just a really cool example of someone's creative home gunsmithing. They wanted a, a smaller pistol, they wanted a lot of firepower, and so they went for this ten shot chopped off Walch Derringer thing. 
And you know what? That's the sort of thing that you still see people doing today, and it's just another example of how people don't really change uh, with, with time. People stay the same. Technology changes, the guns that people are cutting up change, but the cutting up process really doesn't. If you'd like to own this one, uh, in fact both of these, they are both a single lot together here at this upcoming Rock Island auction. If you take a look at the description text below, you'll find a link to the catalog page for these two particular pistols. You can take a look at Rock Island's description and pictures and place a bid right there through their website if you'd like to have them yourself. Thanks for watching.